Hi there, join me in this video when I'm gonna give you some tips and show you some photographs that I've taken on my reflection pool. In last week's video, I spent a day moving my reflection pool to this current location because where it used to be, it was too low, it got a little bit dirty and needed a refresh and it had also sprung a leak as well. So I needed to do a little bit of work on it and I thought while I was doing the work, I would move it to this location, lift it higher and make it much more usable and comfortable to photograph with. Now for you, that was last week, but for me, it's been three weeks since I moved the reflection pool here. So so during that time, I've spent quite a bit of time sitting outside taking photographs. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you some of those photographs in this video. And I'm also going to give you some of the tips that I found out um, to how to improve your photographs from a reflection pool. So stay tuned because I know that I'm really going to help you to enjoy your photography. One problem that you will find if you build your own reflection pool is that you will get all kinds of leaf matter and sea heads and all kinds of things landing on the top of the pool and that will just spoil the quality of the reflection when you're taking pictures at a very low angle. So I find a very easy way of clearing it. I've got a bit of stick that's cut just ever so slightly wider than the reflection pool. So what I do is basically just Put it in the pool and then drag it down the pool and that collects all of the leaf matter and detritus and when i'm not talking to the camera i can make a much better job of this but basically when it gets to the end you just wedge it in at the sides of the pond and all of the rubbish is collected here if you really wanted to you could scoop it out of the pool but it leaves this main area really clear of any debris and just makes the reflection much clearer during my last video, you will have seen me add some black dye to the reflection pool. Now this serves two purposes. The first one is to make the surface even more mirror-like uh, because it makes the water very black and you can't see down into the bottom of the pool. Now it's completely harmless because it's plant-based and so it doesn't do any damage to the birds or the environment. Um, and it's not absolutely essential either because if you can get your camera very low um, and have a very shallow angle to the water, you don't see down into the water anyway and you still get a great reflection but another big bonus of putting the black dye into the water is it stops any light getting into the water so it saves any buildup of algae as well so it serves two purposes so i'm going to add some more now because over the last three weeks um, i think either the um, black dye has just faded or because we've had quite a bit of rain it could have got diluted as well so there's virtually none left so it needs replenishing now. If you are enjoying this video and you want to stay up to date with lots more photographic content like this, then you can click the like, subscribe and the bell notifications because not only does it help out the channel, but it makes sure that you get informed of all of my future releases. Now, during my first few sessions taking photographs here on the reflection pool, what I did is I put mixed seed here on this table at the end because that attracted the birds down to the table. Um, now, this did serve a purpose initially because it got them used to coming to the table to feed. But I very quickly realized that it wasn't really very ideal for taking photographs because Partly they were hidden by these rocks that I had to lift a little bit higher to hide the table so it stayed looking natural. Um, but also it lifted them up quite high so to get them and their reflection in the same shot um, it made the height of the photograph very tall and it wasn't really very pleasing so what i had to do is try and think of a way of getting them closer to the edge so they were lower to the water so what i've done is i've sunk into the stones a little glass bowl that i can put um, seed into but this has an added effect of it concentrating the birds into one very small location so I can be much more sure where they're going to be and they're closer to the edge of the water. So what I did is I just made the stones in front of the bowl a little bit higher so it couldn't be seen and it still looked natural. 
I have also had to replace this bit of grass here at the end of the reflection pool and even after just two days it's already looking worse for wear again so if I was to do a, another photography session here on the reflection pool I'd have to replace it again but it is worth it being here because it does make the end of the reflection pool seem very natural but I think probably what's happened is I set the grass into uh, an ice cream pot with a few holes in the bottom and I think it's probably drawn up too much water Water, and it's just um, overwhelmed the grass because the soil underneath has got very waterlogged. So the other reason why this video has taken so long to film is I've had some kind of problem with my um, Nikon D850. Uh, it seems the focus has gone out of alignment. I must have knocked it at some point. Um, I think it is a problem with the body and not the lens. Um, but all of the images are just very soft um, and they've got a kind of double exposure quality to them so it's definitely had a knock somehow so this is going to have to go off to be repaired so all of the four days photography that I did using this I pretty much had to scrap because the photographs just weren't good enough so I've spent a few days with my Z6 II with my 24 to 200 millimeter lens but that's actually been really very adequate because if I'd got any longer lens then I wouldn't be able to get very much of the reflection pool um, in the shot and so it's not worked out too badly and I've still got some good photographs as well. Now if you saw my video a few weeks ago when I went to Coombs Valley Nature Reserve I took my pop-up hide for its first outing. Um, it's really good because you can put it in a backpack and carry it around and it pops up in seconds which I'll show you very shortly but it's ideal for taking photographs on this reflection pool because um, without it I wouldn't be able to sit in comfort and hide from the birds. So it was my main inspiration for moving the reflection pool to this location. But once you get it out of the backpack, it's basically just a very quick unfold. And what I like about this um, particular hide is it's got two seats. And so you can sit on one and have the camera in front of you. But if you've got a uh, backpack with your camera in, that can sit on the other. Or um, you could put your lunch or uh, a drink in this cup holder. And it's just great for that kind of thing. And then once you've got the seats unfolded, then setting up the hide itself is a two second job because the cover just falls over the top it just takes a little bit of sorting out and that's pretty much it the hide is erected inside there's a few clips just to stop it from falling back but it's erected in a matter of seconds and it's really comfortable inside so let's go inside and i'll show you what it's like in there I'll just show you the clips that just secure the um, hide. They're very simple. They're just two little cylinders that slip down over those bits of metal that stick up and that stops the whole thing from tipping back on itself. There are lots of vents all the way around the hide for seeing out and I've got them open at the moment so I can film this because if they were closed it'd be very dark in here. Um, but there's one here at the side and all of these vents have a mesh over them um, which makes it more difficult to see into the hide from outside but you can still see out and they're just on velcro so you can lift those up to put a camera lens through and then if I turn the camera around we're looking out of the front vents now at the moment I don't know whether you can tell there is a robin on the end of the reflection pool um, but there's a vent here on one side and then another vent here on the other side both facing forward and then there's another side vent just here and if you really wanted there's a further one on the back of the hide if you needed to look out the back. Now obviously when I'm um, taking photographs I have all of these vents closed so it's dark in here. I just have the camera poking through the front vent um, just so I can see out onto the reflection pool. Now one problem that I didn't anticipate when using the shorter lens is that I need to lean forward more to use the viewfinder on the camera and when you do that what can happen is the whole 
of the hide can tip forward because you're sitting forward on the seat which is really not very good if you've got a bird on the end of the reflection pool because that will scare them off. Um, when I was using the longer lens this wasn't a problem because the back of the camera was about here so I could just put my eye to it and take the photograph without having to lean forward but that's just something that you need to get used to and think about um, and you can use the screen on the back of the camera but obviously that's going to drain the battery quicker. Now I do seem to be having a juvenile robin visiting the reflection pool on a very regular basis. Pretty much every time I've been out to photograph the reflection pool it's been there. Now sadly it seems to have some kind of damaged wing. So if you look at this photograph here you can see that its left wing is hanging down slightly but it doesn't seem to be affecting it too much. It seems to be able to fly back and to to the end of the reflection pool. So it's not really uh, affecting it greatly, but obviously it's a little bit sad for the poor little Robin. Now one thing that I have started to realise is that you don't always need the reflection of the bird in the shot as well as the bird itself. So what I have been experimenting with doing is just taking photographs of the bird itself and cropping out the reflection because it gives quite a natural looking shot because the background itself can sort of pass for a riverbank and when you don't make it look so obviously like it's a reflection pool I think that it can actually add to the image because also when you include the reflection and the bird itself it can spread out the image and you get quite a lot of stuff in between the bird and its reflection that can not actually add to the image. Sometimes it works really well and I think the best images are when the bird are right on the very edge of the water so the reflection is right underneath them. What I'll do is I'll leave you with a few more photographs that I've taken here from the reflection pool. I do hope you've enjoyed that video. I'm going to continue to come out here and take photographs on my reflection pool because I just find it really relaxing being out in nature, watching the birds come to uh, visit the pool and just try and get the best image that I can in the process. And it doesn't always matter if I don't get any great photographs. I just enjoy spending time here watching the birds. But if you'd like to see any further videos to find out what other pictures I get, let me know down below in the comments. If you've enjoyed this video, you can also let me know down below or nip over to my Vero account and see lots of my pictures in the process. Now, if you like what I do on the channel and want to help support me to make future content like this, you can visit my Teespring store. There I've got a range of merchandise on offer. So head off over there because the purchase really does help me out and it's really, really appreciated. And also, don't forget the super thanks button as well. But you don't have to spend any money at all to support the channel. You can do that simply by clicking like, subscribe and the bell notification. It really helps me out and it makes sure that you don't miss out on any future content. Watch out for next week's video. That goes live on Sunday. In the meantime, go and check out this video just up here. But all that's left now is to say, stay safe and I'll see you soon.